evening, we have some special guests. Uh, Dr. Richard Price is here with us. Uh, raise your hand, Dr. Price. He was here with us a couple of weeks ago, and not only is he here, his contingency is here, and we're going to recognize them at the end in a special way. He has almost 40 people here with him on today, and they could have worshipped anywhere, but they come by to worship with us. John chapter 4. I'm trying to see where I can launch. Look at verses, I have to read verses 5 and following. The Bible says, Then cometh he, speaking of Jesus, to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. It was about the sixth hour where there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which, first of all, I'm a woman, and then of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If you knew, the gift of God and who it is that you're talking to who asked you give me to drink, you would have asked of him because he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Whence then hast thou that living water? Question mark. I'm only going to verse 15. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drink thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I give him shall never thirst, but the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life. Verse 15, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me <laughs> this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw anymore. You may be seated after the reading of God's word. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers, and may you meditate upon it both day and night. I want to talk to you briefly from the subject this morning how the Lord sees me. This month, we're talking about an understanding how God sees us. And I am convinced that until we began to see ourselves the way God sees us, then we will always labor in mediocrity. Until we began to understand that we are the apple of God's eye and we are God's greatest creation, until we see ourselves as excellence, as, as self-images, as the image of excellence as God has created us, then we will always be one step behind from achieving the blessings that God has for us. And so this story in John chapter 4, can I teach it before I preach it? Let's go to school and then we'll go to church. Because, in other words, in order for you to understand how God sees us, you must understand the conversations that is taking place between Jesus and this Samaritan woman. And in order for that to happen, you have to understand the history between Jews and Samaritans. At the time of Jesus' earthly ministry, the land of Samaria, of Samaria was situated between the regions of Galilee in the north and Judea in the south. Jews that were traveling between Galilee and Judea, they would sometimes take the longer route because they refused to go through Samaria. They refused to go through Samaria, and because of that, they would take the Jordan River route, which would cause them to be six days later in their journey. In other words, they could have gone through Samaria 
which was the shorter route, but Jews did not go through Samaria, so they went six days around in order not to deal with the Samaritans. Now, that's going to be important that you understand because Jesus told his disciples, I must need to go through Samaria. In other words, Jesus is saying, I know that from a custom and a cultural standpoint, we as Jews don't go through Samaria, but there's a reason that I need to go through Samaria. Jesus understood that there was somebody in Samaria that needed him. And even though others had turned their back on Samaria, even though Jews had culturally stopped associating with the Samaritans, Jesus is willing to go where nobody else is willing to go. Let me help you real quick. If can't nobody else help you, Jesus can help you. Jesus understood you may not want to deal with the Samaritans, but I am the son of God and I will deal with whoever is looking for a word of God. Can I help you real quick? The north side of Atlanta, we're here on this side of town, but Jesus is still here. There are some people who don't want to deal with the bluff, but there's a blessing in the bluff. Jesus says, you may not want to come here, but I need to go to the north side of Atlanta because there are some people who need a word from the Lord. See, don't you worry about what people think about you. Don't you worry about how people look down on you. Don't you worry about the stigma and the badge of dishonor that people have put on you. Jesus knows your name. Jesus knows exactly what you need, when you need it. Jesus tells his disciples, I need to go through Samaria. There's a reason that he needs to go through Samaria. The Jews had avoided the Samaritans because of their bitter history. Their history is steeped with the deportation of many people from the northern kingdom of Israel. Because you need to understand that Israel was a united kingdom until the death of Solomon. After King Solomon died, the nation of Israel split into the north and the south. The northern tribes of Israel were collectively called Israel and their capital city was Samaria. 1 Kings 16, 24. The southern tribes, which made up, which was made up of Judah, Benjamin, and Simeon, were collectively called Judah, and their capital city was Jerusalem. I need you to remember that, that the northern tribe, their capital city was Samaria. The southern tribe, their capital city was Jerusalem. Now, Jesus was in Jerusalem, but he had to come through Samaria. They did not come through Samaria because of the history that they had. The reason that they had a problem with the Samaritans is because the Samaritans did not believe in the Pentateuch. Now, they, they were 30 miles apart, watch this, but they had nothing to do with each other. The Jews regarded the Samaritans as half-breeds, they regarded them as hybrids. They regarded them as those who worship God, but it was a compromised worship. And to the Jews, the Samaritans, their unfaithfulness was regarded as religious adultery. And so now you began to understand the conflict between the Jews and the Samaritans. You got it? That's the foundation. Now, we're getting ready to build. So when Jesus says to his disciples, I, Jesus is a Jew, I need to go through Samaria. Can you imagine his disciples saying, we don't go through Samaria. We have a problem with the Samaritans. But Jesus, let me give you your first point, does not allow anybody to keep him from blessing anybody else. Y'all ought to say something, amen. See, when God has a blessing for you, he does not allow anybody to talk him out of the blessing that he has for you. 
even if people are not pleased with the blessing that God has for you, God is going to bless you based upon your relationship with God. I say it all the time. When God gets ready to bless you, he does not stop by anybody else's house to get them to second his motion. God just blesses you based upon your relationship with God. Whatever God has for you, it is for you, and can't nobody keep God from blessing one of his children when he gets ready to bless them. So imagine, they must be looking at Jesus and say, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't go through Samaria. But Jesus says, there's a reason that I need to go through Samaria. Now, here's where the story gets good. In chapter 4, let me just read this to you. Let's go to Bible class. Jesus knew that the Pharisees, see, first of all, the Pharisees were, were having a problem with Jesus because they thought he was baptizing more folk than John. And then in verse number two, it says, in reality, Jesus himself didn't baptize nobody but his disciples. <laughs> okay. So, boy, I, let, let me go and put a nickel in the meter. Isn't it amazing how folk can start a rumor on you based upon half facts? Isn't it amazing some people can take a partial truth and make it the whole truth? I told y'all last week, some of y'all put two and two together and come up with 47. <laughs> see, see, you have to be careful how you only see half the story. You see half, but you want to make it the whole. You, you, listen, you, you really and truly have to be careful. That, see, see, they were trying to cause conflict between the disciples of Jesus and the disciples of John. J Jesus said there is no conflict. See, some people love conflict. Some people cannot rest in a peaceful placid situation there always need to be something stirred up in order for some people to have excitement and for some people to have joy but the devil is a liar God is a God of peace God is not the God of confusion wherever God is he always brings peace he always brings joy he always brings understanding and when there is chaos and confusion it means that somebody has taken God out of the picture <laughs> so he says in verse 3 he left Judah and departed again into Galilee and he must needs go through Samaria here's where the transition happens he comes into the city of Samaria which is Sychar now Samaria it was the region and it was also the city for those who are studying your Bible it was the city there was a city and it was also the region. He comes into the city of Sychar, but it's in the region of Samaria. It is near the parcel of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Here it is. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary. Well, why is he weary? Because he just traveled 31 miles. He had just traveled 31 miles, and he is now tired and weary. Verse 6. It is... Now Jacob's well was there, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Seven. There cometh, Jesus is sitting on the well. There comes a woman of Samaria. She came to draw water. There must be something in your spiritual intellect that should be jumping up and down inside of you now that if Jesus said, I need to go to Samaria, it had to do something with who he was going to meet in Samaria. And the first person that he met in Samaria is this woman. So Jesus had a desire and a need to go to Samaria in order to take care of the needs of this woman because she had a complex about herself. And as we unpack this, I want you to understand that you need to stop seeing yourself as the world sees you and start seeing yourself as God sees you. All right, let's hurry and unpack this. So a woman is coming to draw water in the heat of the day. Jesus says to the woman, give me something to drink. He's hot. He's tired. He says to the woman, give me something to drink. The woman then said the woman of Samaria, how is it? Let's go back to the history. 
How is it being a Jew, you ask, in other words, you ask drink of me, which first of all, I'm a woman. Culturally speaking, men did not speak to women in public. He said, she says, first of all, I am a woman. Second of all, and more importantly, I'm a woman of Samaria. She says, why are you asking me for something to drink? She, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. You see how she sees herself, how she views herself? She views herself as not being good enough to even speak to this Jewish man because the seeds of discontent have been poured into her spirit from her birth until her right now that we are Samaritans, we are hybrids, we are half-breeds. Jews don't even talk to us. And because of that, that spirit had been sown into her spirit so that even when somebody nice speak to her, she don't even know how to receive it. Let me go ahead and help you. See, some of you have been burned, you've been hurt, You've been beat down. You've been broken down. And when somebody nice talk to you, you don't even know how to handle it because you have been through so many bitter moments, so many sad moments, so many upsetting moments, so many devastating moments that when goodness and righteousness comes your way, you can't even recognize it. She couldn't even recognize a good man in her life. Let me skip across the field. You had better keep your eyes open so that when good people, when godly people, when spiritual people come your way, it is the law of attraction. God is allowing them to be spiritually attracted because spirits have to agree and spirit knows spirit. Jesus came into the presence of this woman, but because she had such a demoralizing image of herself, she didn't even recognize Jesus. Sometimes you can go through so much stuff in life that even when you have a good day, it's a bad day. <laughs> have you ever seen a bitter person? Just, just bitter? Bitter co-worker? Bitter family member? No matter how much something well is going on, they're just bitter. This woman, she had bought into the idea that she is a Samaritan woman. And because she is a Samaritan, Jews have no need for us. Because they look at us as second-class citizens. They look at us as mongrels. They look at us as dogs. And I tell people all the time, it's not what folk call you, it's what you answer to. <laughs> Let me say it again. It is not what people call you, it is what you answer to. What you have to do is stop allowing people to label you because if people can label you, then they can limit you. But when you understand who you are in Christ Jesus, then it does not matter what you've gone through. It does not matter the heartaches and the headaches that you've had in life. You understand now I am a child of God. I am somebody in Christ Jesus. And because I'm somebody in Christ Jesus, it does not matter to me what you think about me, how you see me, how you feel about me, what you think about how God has blessed me, what I am is I am a child of God. I am validated by the blood of Jesus Christ and not by what you think about me. At some point in time, you had better stop waiting for people to validate your greatness. One more time. At some point in time, you need to stop waiting for people to validate your greatness. God has created you for greatness. Now, some of us have a problem with that because we don't want to brag on ourselves. As I told a class, as I told a class on this morning, you're not bragging on yourself. All you're doing is, is showing that you are the handiwork of God. You are the craftsmanship of God. See, when you woke up this morning, you should have had a good perspective of who you are. Stop having, 
this is, this, this is a message that's perfectly going to help you. Stop having low self-esteem because of how people think about you, because of what people think about you. See, when you, when you look at yourself through the eyes of Jesus, low self-esteem goes out the window. My children, my wife, they, they tell me all the time, you think you somebody? Yep. <laughs> Some of y'all say that. You walk like you, yep. But guess what? I'm not somebody because you say I'm somebody. I'm somebody because I knew I was somebody when God woke me up this morning and I was able to put one foot in front of the other. I said, thank you, Jesus. I am somebody because he thought enough of me to leave me on this time side of life. And if he thought enough of me to leave me on this time side of life, he wants to show off his handiwork and his craftsmanship. Not that I am perfect, but I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And, and so this woman, this woman, let me get to this woman. This woman tells Jesus, listen, why are you asking something of me? I'm a Samaritan woman. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew, if you knew who I was, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that said to you, give thee, give me to drink, and thou was, have asked of him, he would have given you living water. Jesus said, now, if you knew who I was, you would have asked me, and I would have not given you physical water, but I would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, now, here is what blew my mind. I was all right with the text until verse number 11. Okay. The woman said unto Jesus, sir, you have nothing to draw with. And the well is deep. Why? From whence then hast thou living water? She says, always talking about water. Here's what blew my mind about verse 11. Because Jesus is getting ready to give her a whole nother image of herself. If, if I don't have to get to, if I don't have time to get to it, Brother Rucker, she'd had five husbands. That's a whole lot of heartbreak. That's a whole lot of abuse. Five husbands? Can you imagine how she felt about herself in that culture? in that day and time, being married five times, she came to the well when nobody else was supposed to be there because apparently, if you read between the lines, she had been scourged and scandalized by the good sisters. Yeah, you done had five husbands. I don't need you around, my man. See, if a woman done had five husbands, some of y'all sisters got a problem. Y'all can say amen if you want to. Some of y'all sisters got a problem. If she done had five husbands, what's wrong with her? Honey, you better watch your man. No, she may have had, there may have been some other stuff going on that we don't see. You be careful how you judge people based upon the situation that they're in because you don't know what they came through to get to the situation that they're in. All of us got some situations that we've come through and are in right now. So, so can you imagine how this woman felt inside? Folk talking about her, folk whispering about her. Hey, psst, that's, 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 she done had five husbands and now I heard she's shacking with a dude. I heard she, I heard she done took somebody else's man. Child, you better keep your eye on your man. Let, 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 let me help you with this. <laughs> if she can take him, he ain't yours. <sighs> Listen. Bro, Benny, my wife goes to the gym, and there are guys at the gym. I went in one day. I'm looking at them, too. I'm like, good God. 
I'll roll that way, but I'm like, that's a nice looking man right there. And so she goes to the gym by herself. She sees all those, uh. She went to work the other day. She said, you know, somebody said something to me at work. That, no, I, I was with her one day. We were, we, were at, we, we were at, when we were moving here, we were at one of the hotels downtown. This is honest as good as true. I was with her. I was at the checkout counter. counter. This is true, Brother Rich. I was at the checkout. I was, I was checking us into the room. She was standing over there to the side. I don't know how, maybe she was. I don't know how she was standing. <laughs> and I'm checking in. And bro, Charlie, I, I, I see this guy walk by, and then I see him come back. See, I know the move because I used to be a player. I said I used to be a player, and game knows game. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so I saw him walk by, and I just, but then I saw him like, I forgot, did I forget something? Like he forgot something, so he could go back. And so he's doing this, and by the time he gets to her, he says, oh, uh, uh, how you doing? And so she's up there. He says, are you all right? So here is where Jesus left me. He didn't go all the way out. He just took a break. I'm at the counter. She's over there. He's over there. I turn around. I said, hold on one minute. I said, yeah, she's fine. Any problems up in here? Man, I'm sorry. I didn't know she was with you. Get the step in. For we have a misunderstanding up in here. And I just so happened to have on a suit. He said, you must be a preacher. Not today. Don't let this suit fool you. So, Jesus wants this woman to see herself the way he sees her. Verse 11, I was reading good until I got to verse 11. So, give me a reader. Anybody got a reader? G give me a reader. Anybody brother got a reader? Y can you read it? It's on the board? I know it's on the board, but I want somebody to read it. I'll read it. <laughs> the woman said to him. The woman, you got King James? Oh, is that King James? Uh, 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 no, I want, I want the hood rat Bible. Listen, I don't want Buckhead. I want Bankhead. Yeah, oh, I got King James. Let, hold on. Let me, get, let me get your mic. Let me get your mic. Hold on one second. The woman said unto him. Oh, you got him. King James? All right, go ahead. Sir, thou hast nothing to draw okay. with. First of all, Jesus is thirsty. Watch this. Then I'm going to let you go. He's sitting on the way. The woman is coming to the well. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine as she's coming, she sees a figure, a silhouette, somebody sitting on the well. Jesus then asked her for some water. She said, wait a minute, why are you asking me for something? I'm a Samaritan woman, and you know Jews don't like Samaritans. The woman says, read it one more time. Sir, thou has nothing to draw with. Listen, you're asking me for something to drink, but you didn't even bring, if I was going to give you something, you didn't even bring a cup to put it in. Here is what got me. See, you got to love somebody to drink after them. All the diseases and stuff going around there. <laughs> Brother Rucker, do you love me? <laughs> I believe you love me.
I want you to drink after me. <laughs> he loves me, but he doesn't love me intimately. Sister Gloria, do you love me? See, you only <laughs> drink after folk that you love intimately. That's a good point. Don't miss this point. When Jesus asked the woman for some water, <laughs> he said, I love you so much that even though you've been with five men and you're shacking with one now, I love you so much that I am willing to drink after you and that is the whole story in one verse that Jesus loved this woman so much that he asked her for something to drink. She had experienced love, but she never experienced that kind of love. My, 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 sir. When you experience intimate love with Jesus, he says what others will not do, I will do. That's why some of you are looking for love in all the wrong places. And it is not that this brother does not love me. It's just not that deep. What Jesus says is, if you understand this text, what he's trying to do is give this woman a new perspective so that when she goes home, she does not see herself as the turn out trick. She sees herself as somebody who's loved by God. And until we are ready to see ourselves the way God sees us, you have to be able to look in the mirror and say, I am somebody in Jesus. It is not about what others, let me close. It is not about what others think about me, what they say about me. I am somebody in Jesus. And I don't have time to deal with the entire story, but as I told you earlier, Jesus told this woman to go and get your husband. In verse number 15, the woman said to him, sir, give me this water that I may thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, go and call your husband and come back to me. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the whom thou now hast is not your husband. In other words, then he said, you had five, and now you got somebody else. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. And then she changes the conversation to talking about worship. You remember I told you that uh, the Samaritans worship in Mount Gerizim. Uh, that is not where they perceive worship to be. And so the woman begins to give Jesus a lesson on worship. But Jesus turns it around. And look at verse number 24, the one we quote all the time. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Because this woman in verse number 20, she said, Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you as a Jew, you say that Jerusalem is a place where we ought to worship. Well, let me stop by and tell you, any time is a good time to worship God. Any place is a good place to worship God. God is not confined to any one place. You ought to worship him in spirit 
and in truth. You can worship God while you're walking in the grocery store. You can worship God while you're driving down the street. You can worship God while you're driving into your carport. You can worship God, young folk, while you're taking your test at school. Worship God anytime because he's a God that is able. He's a God that is willing. He's a God that is ready to receive your worship. What this woman did, she had what I call a serendipitous encounter with the Lord. Serendipity is this. The definition of serendipity is that you didn't get what you came for, but what you got is greater than if you had a gotten what you came for in the first place. Let me say it one more time. Serendipity is that you did not get what you came for, but what you got is greater than you would have, that you got if you had a got what you came for. And when I talk about a serendipitous encounter with the Lord, this woman, she came for running water. This woman, she came for physical water, but she had a serendipitous encounter with the Lord. She didn't get running water, but she got living water. She came to get her physical thirst quench, but what she got was a spiritual thirst quench. And the Bible says, I love this part, that the woman, when the disciples showed up, the Bible said that she dropped her pots and she ran into town and she told everybody in town, come see a man that has told me everything. He must be the Messiah. He must be the Son of God. I need to tell you before I take my seat, Jesus, you ought to drop your pots. You ought to drop anything that's holding you down. Drop anything that's holding you back. Drop anything that's hindering you and tell everybody about the man by the name of Jesus. You know Jesus, don't you? He's Mary's baby. He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's Peter's. He's Peter's. He's Peter's. Thou art the Christ. He's John's beloved. He's God all by himself. He's Moses' rock. He's Moses' rock. He's, he's Isaiah's. He, he, he's the son of the valley. He's a lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. He's Jesus all by himself. And as long as the sun keeps on standing up in the east and sitting down in the west, you ought to cling God. You ought to cling to God. As long as the blaze of grass are still kissed by the dew in the morning, he's God all by himself. He's a sovereign God, and he doesn't need any help. This woman, she dropped the pots, and she ran and told everybody, come see this man. Somebody ought to say, come see this man that can tell me everything. And the Bible says that because this woman ran into the city, that many in that town believed on Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. The book of Acts says there's no other name under heaven given by men whereby we must be saved. There's something about the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, the death angel did not touch you on last night, but an angel of grace and mercy woke you up and started you on your way. At the name of Jesus, you got here with Without any hurt, harm, or danger, there's something about the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, your children are doing all right. At the name of Jesus, you still have life, health, and strength. At the name of Jesus, you're still able to get up and dress yourself. At the name of Jesus, you're still clothed in your right mind. You know the difference between up, down, left, and right. At the name of Jesus, you came to him one day and gave the preacher your hand, but guard your heart. At the name of Jesus, you were baptized for the remission of your sins and came in contact with the blood of Jesus Christ. At the name of Jesus, devils will tremble. Hell will get worried, but heaven will be happy. There's something about the name of Jesus. I ain't going nowhere. I'd rather die than switch from the name of Jesus because Jesus has done too much for me. Jesus has brought me through too much stuff. Jesus had dried too many tears. Jesus had banished too many wounds. Jesus put a roof over my head and clothes on my back and food into my refrigerator. How can you not love the name of Jesus? I get happy every time I talk about Jesus. I get excited every time I think about Jesus. I get more and more joy just thinking about the name of Jesus. Some folk don't want to talk about Jesus, but I can't help talking about Jesus. Some folk don't want to call the name of Jesus, but I call him Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 there's something about Jesus. You got to know it's all about Jesus. I was at the mall yesterday, and I try to talk about Jesus everywhere I go. I was at the mall yesterday, and we were eating, 
and we walked out and I saw some people taking pictures with somebody in, in, a, in a vehicle and I'm not gonna call a person name and so I asked I asked I asked the person I said well who is that because windows were tinted you couldn't see in it and I'm just nosy by nature I said, who is that the Bible says watch thou in all things that's even at Lenox Mall I'll be watching I said, who is that they said it's, it's young somebody young one of them young rappers I guess his first his first name is young too I'm looking for some old rappers. And so I circled around and I said, I, don't, I, I Googled him. I said, oh, oh he, he's pretty big. He's really. So <clears throat> he parked and uh, I pulled up beside him. I, yo, 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 roll your window down. I'm old, man. I'm not a threat to them. I'm old, man. He said, hey, what's up? I said, what's up with you? I said, you, you young so-and-so? Yeah, that's me. I said, okay. Uh, I said, well, I, I think my niece likes it. I FaceTimed my niece, da da da, da. And then I hung up. I said, listen, uh, wh where are you going to church at tomorrow? He said, well, he said, where you preach at? I said, I preach downtown in Atlanta. Told him church. He said, he's, he's, no, I'm serious, serious. What's, what's? What's the name of the church? He said, uh, I'm going out of town today, and when I come back in town, I'm coming by the church. I said, so I gave him my car. <clears throat> I gave my number. Now, whether anything comes out of that or not, the seed was planted. <laughs> and I looked him up, and he's, he's big. He's, he's, he's whatever. See, I don't care how big you get. You, you, you ain't ever too big to not need Jesus. <laughs> Everybody need Jesus. See, never be afraid because you don't go in your own power where you go in the power of the Lord. So this woman, I want you to get this. In three minutes, you have to make a decision. She saw herself through the eyes of others. Instead of seeing herself through the eyes of Jesus. When as a child. You don't get positive affirmation. That you're beautiful. You're smart. You're intelligent. You're all of those great things. If you don't get that as a child. And you have low self-esteem as a child you will grow up with low self-esteem as an adult. That's why you have some adults that are always trying to overcompensate for the pleasure of others. But when you understand, okay, I am who I am by the grace of God. I don't have to overcompensate for you to like me. Because if you don't like me for who I am, the same door that swings in swings out. Because when you do that, then you, oh my goodness, thank you, Holy Spirit, you are never satisfied by trying to satisfy others. You become so busy trying to satisfy other people that you're never satisfied. Y'all remember Lionel Richie? Song, Easy Like Sunday Morning? Before you came into the church? <laughs> Lionel Richie said, everybody wants me to be what they want me to be. And I'm not, what does he say? I'm not happy when I got to fake it. Ooh. Everybody wants me to be what they want me to be. And I'm not happy when I try to fake it. Some of y'all stop faking. Stop faking. <laughs> Because let me tell you something. 
if you faking to make folk happy, you'll have to fake to keep them happy. This woman, when she dropped her water pots, here's what she said. Y'all ain't faking no more. I am who I am. Yeah, I had five husbands. And what? See, we have to be careful in the church. And, and Dr. Price and I was talking about this uh, last week, week before last. We have become experts in the truth, but not in the grace of the truth. <laughs> we experts in telling the truth. But we're not experts when it comes to God's grace. See, the truth is, if my daughter has a child out of wedlock, she shouldn't have done that. That's the truth. We become experts in the truth, but we dismiss grace. <laughs> so because she had a child out of wedlock, and I'm telling y'all the truth, Where's the grace? So now because she had a child out of wedlock, she is somehow less than? How is she less than because she sinned? When the Bible says, see, it's amazing how we shout stuff we don't have a problem with. We cry loud the truth with stuff we don't struggle with, but stuff we struggle with, we talk about grace when it comes to us, but if we're not struggling with what somebody else is struggling with, we don't want to hear nothing about grace. What y'all going to do about that? Well, what did we do about you? And we have messed up, and I will be the first to admit it, and I apologize every time I get a chance. When I was growing up in the church, I was brought up on a performance-based religion. That the more you did, the more God loved you. That is, let me say this, and we're being broadcast all over the world. That is the biggest lie perpetrated by the church of Christ. <laughs> Whether you perform well or not, God still loves you. <laughs> because none of us performs to the level that we should perform to but God still loves us. So if my daughter had, and some of y'all are going to think my daughter pregnant as of this moment, I don't believe she is. But guess what? If she is, I'm still going to love her. And you ought to love her too. See, we, we have become like sharks. Sharks kill off their wounded. So when somebody gets wounded, we like, okay, let's get them. Is that really the time I need you to stomp on me when I'm down? So we cry about the truth, but we whisper about grace. This woman, they cried loud the truth. She's been married five times. Jesus said, yeah, that's the truth. But now let me give her some grace. <laughs> and because of that, many people came to Jesus because of the testimony of this woman. For those of you who have been hurt under the auspices and the umbrella of Christianity, I apologize. 
because Christians sometimes can be very cruel people. We can be cold sometimes. However, as hurtful and as harmful as it may have been, you got to get back in the game. You can't allow that pain to define your life for the rest of your life. Somebody said something to you. Somebody hurt you. Somebody talked about you. It's true. Now give to them what you wanted for yourself. Grace and forgiveness. And get back in the game. Don't you stand on the outside of the arena Talking about I'm not going in there because somebody hurt my feelings. God designed you to be a vital, intricate part of the kingdom of God. None of us in here are so clean. Well, we'll say, put my life story on the big screen. I wouldn't do a reality TV show for all, for nothing. Some of the stuff Sister Watkins be saying around the house <laughs> when she get mad. I wouldn't want y'all to look down on her for that. And I'd just be sitting there talking about, well, Jesus really doesn't want you talking like that. Let's pray. I'm sitting there trying to keep the Lord in the house and 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 Bring up the Bible and talk. About, let's hold hands and pray and touch and agree and, 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 and put some olive oil on the doorpost. All that kind of stuff. I wouldn't want nobody to see. Oh. Y'all talking about, I ain't seen that in a, don't push her. <laughs> no, she, I'm serious. She's probably one of the most genteel talking people in, in the world. Uh, no, it's not your husband. Your husband, for the most part, I'm a decent person. The point is, none of us are clean. <laughs> From the pulpit to the pew. So now, you have a decision to make. First of all, there are a few categories. For those of you who feel like this woman, that I can't ever get it together, that folk always, some folk think, folk always talking about me. Folk are looking down on me because I've been divorced, or I had a child out of wedlock, or I left my husband, or I left my wife, or, or I filed bankruptcy, or I lost my house, or my car got repossessed, or this happened, that happened. Stop it right now. Stop it. Stop viewing yourself through the eyes of other people. Stop it. It's unfair to you. It robs you of your joy. See yourself the way God sees you. So you got to break free today. Break free. This woman broke free. Her running is symbolic of her breaking free. Y'all talk about me if you want to. I don't care. I just met Jesus. Say what you want. I just met Jesus. And then there are those who need to have an encounter with the Lord. You need him. The Bible says many were saved in that city. You need him to save you. How does Jesus save you? You come by hearing the word of God. Believe in what you've heard. Be willing to repent of your sins. Confess Jesus Christ to be the son of God. And we'll baptize you for the remission of your sins. He'll save you. He'll save you from yourself. He'll save you from this dying and criticizing world. He'll save you from the hand of Satan who's seeking to destroy you. And there's some of you who just need prayer. You're like, I'm in a moment right now. I'm in a moment. I'm going through something, and folks see all of this on the outside, but they don't know there's some stuff going on on the inside. I'm lonely, I'm depressed, I'm down, I don't feel loved, I don't feel cared for. I'm just going through a moment. Turn it over to God. 
You came here for one thing, he'll give you another thing. That's serendipity. But what you leave with is greater than what you would have gotten had you gotten what you came for. You can leave with living water. This moment right now is about nobody else but you and God. It's not about what people think about you. Don't worry about the people sitting beside you. Don't worry about what people in front of you are going to say, people behind you are going to say. It's how the Lord sees you. Come right now as we together stand and sing a song. Jesus, Jesus, my darling.